concept of predestination. They taught free will, but merged with their free will was the idea that an individual through his own works could become perfect and gain merit on his own. Father Matteo Ricci illustrates the tremendous power of the Jesuit to infiltrate other religions and cultures. He became in every way a Chinese and in time infiltrated the court of the emperor in China. These Jesuits could read and learn the language and the religion better than the people, become the teachers of the people, and then insinuate Roman Catholicism, eventually opening up these magnificent courts to the Catholic missionaries. They entered into the primitive and poor areas of the world and thousands of pagans were gathered into the Catholic Church through these men. But they had a secret way of doing it. In the book Fire Jesuits we read, they allowed their proselyte Christians to commit idolatry by a subtle evasion, that of enjoining themselves, enjoining them to hide under their cloaks an image of Jesus Christ, to which they teach them by mental reservation to direct those public adorations which they rendered to the idol. The Jesuits infiltrated the other orders. They took over the head and the control of the Inquisition from the Dominicans. They turned it into a tremendous engine, a terrible power that wiped out thousands and millions of people. In Gary's doctrines of the Jesuits, we read it was Loyola himself who procured the erection of the Inquisition in Portugal. It was at the hands of the Jesuits that millions of people suffered the most horrible deaths terrible suffering that goes beyond our imagination today. These people did not realize that as they were persecuting these people, as they were torturing their flesh and causing every nerve in the body to scream in pain, they were causing the sufferings of Jesus Christ Himself in His people. In Fox's Book of Martyrs and other books, it tells about the tremendous campaigns that raged against those who had fled into the mountains to have religious freedom. In time, all of the Albigensian race in southern Fran France were completely genocide exterminated from the earth. Not one was left. And the Walden Seas in northern Italy were exterminated to the place where there was only a few thousand left. And they had made their way over the Alps to Geneva. The record of history has been rewritten, folks, by the Roman Catholic religion. The Jesuits became the controllers of history. And thus, the record of millions of faithful souls is not available to us. The spirit of prophecy tells us that that record is written in heaven. The church, every time she wanted to evangelize or infiltrate another area of the world, set up schools or colleges there in Rome. This became the origin of the Pontifical Gregorian University. Its purpose is for, for the subversion of the world. They sent up houses of the Jesuits and magnificent schools which gave some indication of the tremendous wealth of this order. Europe was being covered by the Jesuits. In the Ignatian fireworks we read, or we notice on the back page it shows the Pope heating the fire that burned London in the 17th century. And it shows Jesuits under the control of the Pope starting fires in every country of the world. These Jesuits believed diabolical and witchcraft doctrines. At the heart of that order was occult teaching. From a Jesuit creed by John Battista Poza, he says, I believe in two gods, one is son, father, and mother metaphorically according to a temporal generation the other metaphorically mother and father according to a temporal generation and what is consequent here too that the common term mother father may be equally attributed to God and the Blessed Virgin as if they were both hermaphrodites sexually male and female this is raw pagan teaching in the raw sense of the word in the book again the fiery Jesuits they affirm that the diligence of an expert conjurer in diabolical arts may well be thought worthy of a reward and that a fortune teller is not obliged to restitution if he hath consulted the devil, nor to confession, though he hath expressly invoked the devil, and that it is lawful to consult a conjurer. It was the Jesuits who became the masters of astrology in the Dark Ages. They led out in the schools of teaching astrology in the Vatican. Folks, this chart was made by a famous Jesuit Kircher, and it's astrological healing. In the Soul Husters by Rennie Norbergen, an illustration that their teachings on astrology and their occult beliefs in the heart of that system has never changed. Rennie Norbergen in this book quotes Gene Dixon as saying, As a child I was taught Chaldean astrology by a wise and wonderful man, a Jesuit priest. 
I don't see how anything can be... Uh, I don't th see how anyone can say that astrology is wrong. After all, he was a man of God. Gene Dixon in the world is one of the most popular clairvoyant and astrologers today. And we understand now that she was taught that by the Jesuits. In Guri's Doctrine of the Jesuits, this also is available in the library here at PUC, we learn the secret of how the Jesuits became the masters of the confessional. They could excuse sin by subtle evasion. And because of it, the wealthy powers of the earth beat a path to the Jesuit confessional. They learned the secrets of state. They sent this to the head of their order. And through it, they were able to manipulate the emperors and the rulers of the world. Henry the... The Henry the Fourth had them in his kingdom, and we find that uh, <clears throat> that the Lewises surrounded themselves with Jesuit and used them as confessors and to run their government. But this Lewis, the fifteenth, was a homosexual. No wonder he needed a Jesuit confessor. As we were going through Versailles, we were told that in this room, this was the bed of Lewis. And as the heads of state came in each morning to talk over state matters, he would grab one of them, pull them in bed, and pull the curtain around him. And after sodomy was over, they would continue the state talks. And his confessor, his confessor was a Jesuit. The Jesuits got used to the wealth of the world. They lived in luxurious palaces like this, being confessors to the priests and kings. And they became the wealthiest group in the world. Through their influence in France, one of the most horrible massacres that took place in history took place. Publicly, the church appeared to be uniting with the Protestants, just as they are today, friends. And secretly, they planned the slaughter in 1572, where 25,000 Huguenots alone were slaughtered in Paris and over 65,000 throughout France. Because of this, the governments recognized the danger of the Jesuit order. And they began to be expulsed from various countries of this world. They were kicked out of Paris. They were kicked out of Portugal where they had gained tremendous power. They were removed from Spain. The governments realized that the wars and the troubles were being caused by the Jesuits. And now the Jesuit order went through all the terrors of the Inquisition. It was at this time in history that the Jesuits were taken and they were thrown in prison. They were thrown on ships and forced to stay on these ships without toilet facilities until disease destroyed their bodies and racked their souls. The Jesuit order's power, the secret of its power, is in its structure. One man stands as all-powerful at the head of it. The provincial is a man that is all-powerful within his area, submitting to the general, and then the superiors are in control of the Jesuit individuals. But at any time, they can go around their superiors, to the one above him, keeping a check and balance situation. The local yokel individual Jesuit is part of an elaborate system of espionage. And they report on each other too, keeping a balance. They report to their superiors, who in turn report weekly to the provincial. Tremendous bodies of knowledge go into the provincial from all over their provinces. The provincials give a summary report monthly to the general but superiors can go around their provincial and thus a check and balance is kept all the way to the top. Even the general himself is subject to a council of six elected by the general congregation. Four are elected from four different countries. One as an advisor and a military commander and the other is the general's confessor. One of the, or the other of the latter two must be with him at all times. Occult Theocracy by Lady Queensborough, page 309 and 310. This man has held more power in this world than any other human being alive. Gurry's doctrine of the Jesuits, we read, the general has usually stood towards the Pope, much as a powerful grand feudatory lord of the Middle Ages did towards a weak titular Lord Paramount, or perhaps as a captain of a splendid host of free champions, as he did towards a potentate with whom the, he chose to take temporary and precarious service. And the shrewd Roman populace have long shown their recognition of this fact by styling these two great personages the White Pope and the Black Pope. In truth, the society has never from the very first obeyed the Pope whenever its will and his happened to run counter to each other. 
In the book, The Fire of Jesus, we read about the power again. Jesuit power arrived to such an height that when the Italian di Acquaviva came to be Father General, he gave his hand to be kissed as the Pope is toe. In their constitution, the Father General is called Dei Legatus, or Christi Vicarius, one of which, having the title, regarded not the Pope's message, though sent to him by two cardinals, enjoining everyone in the society to acknowledge Christ present in their general. The Jesuits tell us, our Father General, as all know, governs Rome itself and the Popedom. We make war at our pleasure between one prince and another, between a prince and his subjects, who serve dominion over cities and countries, fearing no discovery of our actions, since our commerce is chiefly with great men. We know every public secret and can, in a singular way, dispatch heretics and enemies of the Roman court. The view of Ignatius is so great that in uh, the book Fiery Jesuits we read that in the University of Krakow in 1627 Ignatius is portrayed as holding the world in his hands and fire streaming forth from his heart with his motto I came to send fire into the world and look at this blasphemy from a sermon by F. D. F. Doza J.S. quoted in the Fiery Jesuits in these last days God has spoken to us by his son Ignatius, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. What do these people believe about Ignatius anyway? The grand rule of the order is that an inferior readily to declare his assent and consent to a superior in act of obedience when he says the snow is black or the crow is white. To yield perfect, absolute, and unlimited obedience to him they call Christ's vicar. By the abdication of their own will and judgment, they are the staff in the old man's hands. We should always be ready to accept this principle. I will believe that the white that I see is black if the hierarchical church defines it. The Spiritual Exercises of Ignatius here, page 141. This is the order of induction in the Jesuit system. First those studying to enter the order, the novices. Then the scholastics, the great teachers, the temporal ruling over the houses and the schools. And the coadjutors finally, the agents that carry out the responsibility of aiding in the world projects. Then, and only then, this mass of Jesuits can be initiated into the actual order of the Jesuits. The profess of the three vows and the profess of the four vows. Finally, after a lifetime of total commitment to this monstrous system, they could be initiated, very few have ever made it, into the mysteries of the Jesuit order. What are those mysteries? I think we're going to find out tonight, folks. The ceremony of induction of the Jesuit is in the Library of Congress in the card is 6643354. It's an unbelievable admission to the world of what goes on in the initiation of a Jesuit into the profess. The Jesuit Orth, my son, you have been taught to act a dissembler among the Roman Catholics to be a Roman Catholic and to be a spy even among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man, among the reformers to be a reformer, among the Huguenots to be a Huguenot, among the Calvinists to be a Calvinist, among the Protestants generally, be a Protestant. And obtaining their confidence to speak, to seek to speak from their pulpits and to denounce with all vehemence in your nature our holy religion and the Pope and even to descend so low as to become a Jew among the Jews that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between states that were at peace and incite them to deeds of blood involving them in war with each other and to create revolutions and civil wars in communities, provinces, and countries.